like a mist appears for just a day and disappears tomorrow All that we are can quickly fade away replaced with tears and sorrow If a man should die can he live again Hear the promise God has made He will call the dead will answer they shall leave at his command for me will have a long game for the work of his own hand so Friends of our God, though they may pass away, will never be forsaken. All those asleep who in the arts and memories stay, from death he will awaken. He will call the
commence the funeral service for Mr. Rodney Hines at this time. And because of the dignity of this occasion, we're going to ask you if you have your cell phones on you. Can you please adjust it to a mood that will not disturb? We would stand and sing a song. This song is the first one of your song sheet and is on the page number three. And it has the title, Our Strength, Our Hope, Our Confidence. After the song, we can remain standing while we approach our Father in prayer. Our strength, our hope, our confidence. Loving God in the heavens, Jehovah. This afternoon, we beg audience with you in no other name but that of your dear Son, our Ransomer, and our King, Christ Jesus. Father, we have assembled here because we are saddened. We are saddened because the enemy have taken one of ours, Rodney. And Father, we are begging you that you comfort each and every one of us, especially the family. Esther, his mother, Father, she need your comfort at this time. We beg that you will give her the, conf the comfort that only you can give. And you have provided a speaker to speak to all of us so that what is said from your word will be assuring. 
We know that what we are witnessing today will be a thing of the past, and Father, that gives us conf confidence to know that persons who have fallen asleep, like Rodney has, can be awoken from that sleep and can have the privilege, if he's in your memory, Father, to have everlasting life as you have promised. So we beg that you will comfort all of us this evening, help us to pay full attention to what is said from the platform, and as we read your word, let it reach our hearts, and Father, we know that that will motivate us, that would comfort us, and strengthen us for the days, the weeks, and the months ahead. We now entrust this service, Father, into our care, and all of these things we ask in no other name, but that of our leader and king, Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will hear a funeral discourse, and Brother Alan Clark, he will deliver this discourse for us. Good evening. Forty one years of age. Um, one might say gone too soon. Ronnie the Costa Omar Hines was forty one years of age. He was of Second Avenue, Vauxhall. He's the son of Esther Small and Stephen Nurse, and also the late Stanley Small, the grandson of Mary Hines, the brother of Roxanne Hines, Samuel, Sean Thomas, Adrian, and Tiffany Nurse. He was the owner of Roxy's Catering, 246, a former chef of the Chica Bay Hotel, and the Smoky Joe's Mountain Resort. Now on March 13th this year, he died. Gone too soon, we will say, a young man but not forgotten. And so this evening, we're going to use the scriptures, we're going to use the Bible to help provide comfort at this very difficult time. In speaking to his mom, she would say that, I would say with, with regards to her son, that he never kept things on his mind with regards to holding a grudge. And even she had to speak to him at times. She said that he will come and put his arms around her and say, Mommy, you love me? He was a loyal friend. He looked after his mom and his grandmom, for sure, Sister Heinz. And it was said that he was very respectful. And these are qualities of a man who demonstrated a kind of character that we all would like to emulate. Being respectful, being a loyal friend, taking care of money, not holding things in our minds with regards to grudges. Don't give back talk, that's what she's saying. Not perfect, by no means none of us are, but certainly an individual that demonstrated the kind of qualities that would make any parent proud to have as a son. The scripture we're going to begin with is one of a account in the book of Genesis of a man who lost his son. And the account tells us that when Jacob heard that his son was dead, even though he wasn't really dead, but he was taught that he was dead. The account tells us this in the book of Genesis. So let's open our Bibles. We're going to look at the scripture that will bring some comfort. 
to all of us present. So in Genesis 30, 37, we're going to read from verse 34. With that, Jacob, when he heard the news, with that, he ripped his garments apart. He put sackcloth around his, his waist, and he mourned his son for many days. And all his sons and all his daughters kept trying to comfort him, but he kept refusing to, be, to take comfort, saying, I will go down into the grave mourning my son. And his father continued weeping for him. And that's something that we came to picture here in this account, that here was a man so grieving, so in grief and loss, that he said, look, I am going to go down into the grave mourning my son, and his father continued weeping for him. So weeping, groaning, is all part of the process of grieving. There's no quick fix. There's no rush to go through this period. It's understood that it would happen. So at this point, we wonder why. Why would it happen that persons young, healthy, respectful, loyal, hardworking, will have to die. But it's not their fault. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that mankind was given a very fine start. If you remember the account of Adam and Eve in Eden, and just make an image here of how Eden was, a beautiful garden called Eden. A perfect start mankind had. And one simple act of disobedience by two individuals. Let's have the picture, please. One simple act caused Adam and Eve to die. Eventually he grew old, and then he died. But God told him that from dust you are, to dust you will return. You're going to go back to where you came from. But Adam and his wife, when they sinned, their children were not born as yet. So all of their offspring, in effect, got the same disease, so to speak. They all received sin. Through one man, the Bible says that sin entered into the world. Let's read that account in the Bible, because that's how it got started. Through the act of Adam and Eve sinning. It started with them, and it spread to all, all of us. So look at Romans 5 and verse 12. It says, that is why just as true one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin, so death spread to all men because of all sin. Every human being on this earth, because of being born from Adam and Eve, being the offspring of Adam, received the same sickness, sin. And the wages of sin is what? Death. So it's not fault of ours, we just because we were born. Sometimes a parent might have a disease like diabetes, and the children are born with that same disease. No fault of the child. And so we had no control over our parents' decision when they were in Eden, in that beautiful garden, as the image illustrates. Let's have the image, please. So the image, brothers, of Adam and Eve. Right, thanks. The image of Adam and Eve, this is not the image primarily wanted. The one of Adam and Eve in, in Garden of Eden illustrates something that is very significant of how the start that they had. So let's go back a, a bit more to the image of Adam and Eve. So we can just take that one, please. So there's a picture that I want to just highlight with Adam and Eve in Eden and how they had a perfect, a perfect start. That's, it. that's the one they wanted, yes. Thank you. Now, that's how life should have been, a life of perfect happiness for all eternity. And if you just keep that in mind, let's keep that picture in mind for some time during our discussion, that is what they lost. I just want to share with you what happened when Christ came on the earth. When Christ came, he came, and this is what the season is all about. We now think about Christ's death at this time, and rightly so, because this is not the anniversary of his death. And when Christ came and Christ died, he gave us the opportunity 
that we can have what they lost, everlasting life. So when he was on the earth, there was an account where he, one of his friends died. The man was called Lazarus. And the account tells us that when Christ came to his friend's funeral, because they had just buried him in a tomb, his sister Martha and Mary were crying after the loss of their, their brother. And the account tells us this in the book of John, John 11. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the, on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who exercised faith in me, even though he dies, will come to life. And everyone who, who is living and sending faith in, in me will never die at all. Do you believe this? And she said, yes. And the account tells us later, if you look at verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews that had come with her weeping, he groaned within himself, he became troubled, and he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus did what? He gave way to tears. Jesus Christ began to cry. The emotions were so much well up in him that it caused him to cry, even though he had the power to perform a miracle very soon after that. But he was human. Perfect he was, but a human with emotions, with feelings. And he understood how the family felt, how Martha felt, how Mary felt. They lost their brother, and Jesus Christ gave way to tears. So the tears will come. We will cry. We would think about the times we had with, 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 with Ryan. We would think about the times we had with him. And we will remember all the good times. And it will cause tears. It will cause tears to come. But there will also be times when we look back and realize that there were moments that caused us to smile with Rodney. Maybe some pleasant moment with, you, with, uh, with, with your siblings. Maybe some pleasant moment as maybe your, your uncle, and you may start to say, well, look, if he was here, this is what he would have done. Because even though the individual is not present, the memories of that individual will still be there. And we will cherish those, those memories. But keeping in mind, as Christ did, when he found when his, when his friend died, that there was something to look forward to. And he provided hope. The account tells us that he was able to perform a miracle and resurrect that man that was dead. So the Bible tells that Jehovah God will give us comfort at this time. There is hope for, for the day. And Jehovah God tells us this, that even though we die, we can have the prospect of living again. The ransom, the gift of Jesus Christ, is a wonderful gift. And if any gift that is given, you must accept it to benefit from it. If I offer you this telephone and you don't reach out and take it, you will not benefit from it. So if we all know the text in John 3.16 that God loved us so much that he gave us his only son, but then the gift is already given, we know just have to accept what was given. Because who believe and exercise faith in that son will not what? Perish? but have everlasting life. The acceptance of that gift is important for our salvation. It's important that we have that kind of attitude towards, towards the gift. So that's a hope we have. That's a hope that we have. I want to open the scripture together at this point in the book of John, John 5 and verse 25. So let's open our Bibles to John 5 and verse 25. Again, these are the words of Jesus Christ. John 5:25 This is what is mentioned with reference to or having that hope of a resurrection. Most truly Jesus Christ said, I say to you, the hour is coming and it is now 
when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who have paid attention will live. That's a wonderful scripture to think about. The time will come when they will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who pay attention to him will live. They will hear his voice. You know that right now, Ronnie is in a very deep sleep. He's not in any way roaming the earth in some spirit form. He's not in some torment as people might think. No, that is far, far from the thinking of God. Death is not a handmaiden of God. There's no way God will have entertained anything to do with death. Death is the enemy. What we do know is that when a person dies, they have the prospect of being remembered by their creator, who can, in essence, awaken that person in due course in the resurrection. There's an image I want to show you of what the resurrection can be when God made things better. Can you imagine persons welcoming back someone who they love from the dead? When, in essence, the individual hear the voice of, their, of, of Jesus Christ, and come back. They restore, the voice is the same. You recognize their facial expressions because they are our son or daughter or friend or neighbor and we welcome them back. That would be a wonderful time. That would be a time to look forward to, a time when we can be able to have the fellowship that we, we lost. No, that is not something that we can imagine and think as a fairy tale. The Bible speaks of it. Let's read what the Bible says about the resurrection now. Because we saw from that scripture that we just read that the hour is coming when persons will hear the voice of Jesus Christ and live. But this point was also made too in the scriptures. If we turn to the account in the book of Revelation, there's reference being made of a time in chapter 21 of Revelation, which we all look forward to very soon, where we will enjoy life on earth forever. So let's look at the scripture together. We're going to read the book of Revelation 21. So let's turn to Revelation 21. And we're going to read from verse 3 and 4. With that I heard a low voice from the throne say, Look, the tent of God is with mankind, and he will reside with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them, and he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor crying, nor pain be any more. The former things will have passed away. That's a scripture that we might heard many times before. But think about it this way. It says he will wipe every tear from their eyes. You know when you were younger and you, met, and you fell and your mom would call you inside and you would come and she would take maybe the end of her dress or apron and she would wipe the tears from your eyes? How comforting it was to feel that your parent provide that comfort for you, personal attention being given to you as a child. But God is saying to us that when that time comes, he will wipe the tears from our eyes. He will take care of us. Death will be no more. There will be no more mourning, no or crying, no more pain. All of the former things, they will pass away. What a wonderful time that will be. And that will only occur because of what Jesus Christ did by dying. When Christ died, what he in essence did was to cover our sins. But he also did something else as well. He also died to take the sins away from our bodies. What a powerful gift the ransom is. It covers sins that we can ask God for forgiveness when we make mistakes. 
but it also has the power to take away sins from us so that we can now have everlasting life without sin, without sickness, without dying. Imagine a life without having death, people getting sick, people dying. Because of the power of the ransom of Jesus Christ, sin will be taken away from our bodies. And every tear will be whipping, wiped from our eyes. No more mourning, no more pain. And we will have the life that the next image will now show. So, this image will now illustrate how life will be. This is the kind of life that we look forward to. It is very, very similar to the life that Adam and Eve had in Garden of Eden. The only difference is, is that they're not there. As disobedient persons, they die. But we, the offspring, who listen and pay attention to him can have this life forever. And Ronnie, his mom, his siblings, his granny, all of us present can all receive that wonderful provision. So why are we here this evening? We are here in this house of mourning, because this is what it is now. We are mourning. It's not a time to celebrate and jump and dance. It's a time to reflect, to comfort, to mourn. And we are here to do that. And as we sit and reflect on our own life, our own standing with God, we ask ourselves the question, if I had to put a figure between one to ten to mark my relationship with God, where would it be? Would it be a five, a six, a seven? How do you and God stand at this stage in your life? Because the reality is none of us know what will happen later, tomorrow, with regards to our lives. So we then decide to make stock of our own life and make sure that we live a life that is in harmony with God's will and his purpose. Take a look at this scripture with me at this stage to help us to appreciate the importance of our reflecting on our own, own life at this stage. Because we have the, the, the privilege of seeing Rodney, as we know if it's the will of God to raise, and the Bible speaks of that, of persons being resurrected, and if you look at with me in this scripture, in the book of Ecclesiastes, so let's look at it today as to Ecclesiastes 9, and we're going to look at verse 11. It says this, I have seen everything further under the sun, that the swift do not always have wing the race, nor do the mighty, mighty wing the battle, nor do the wise always have food, nor do the intelligent always have the riches, nor do those with, with knowledge always have success, because time and unexpected events overtake them all. And that is true. We don't know how things will turn out. And me, in a literal race, people might run a race, he might have a fast man in a race, and because he fell as the race started, he don't win the race. So not every time the swift wins, because things happen along the course of our lives. And so the question will be always, how are we living our life today? How are we living our life? In Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1, it made this point, it says, a good name is better than good oil, and a day of death is better than a day of, of birth. Better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting, for, those, for that is the end of every man, and the living should take to heart. Better to, right, that's the point there. So when we come to a place of mourning like we are today, we're going to reflect on our own life, because... We mentioned about Rodney being a respectful, a loyal, hardworking person. So he lived up, he had a name, 
a reputation, right? When he was born, he had no reputation. He just was a babe, just there, about to start his life, so to speak. Of, but over a period of time, the person he interacted with his workmates and, and others, he was able to have a reputation. What kind of name are we setting today for ourselves? How do my neighbors and friends see me as a person? Am I known to be that kind of person, a respectful, hardworking individual? And most of all, what kind of name am I making with my God, my creator? So all of these are points we want to keep in mind throughout the course of this day. But we also want to keep in mind, too, the importance of providing the comfort and the assistance needed. Because it's not going to get any um, easier in this world that we live in. The world is a very difficult and hard world that we live in. But we can become our brother's keepers, so to speak. And this process that the family is going to go through is going to be a very difficult one for them for maybe many weeks or months and many years. There's no fast way of resolving this. So what can we do? We become the listening ear. We, we continue to provide the comfort needed. For those of us who are familiar with the scriptures, we will use God's word to provide any comforting scriptures to help. Um, Esther and Mary and, and Joycelyn and all the other family members present to find some kind of comfort and to hold on to this. In fact, just tomorrow at our meetings, we'll be discussing a topic in, in our meetings that really emphasize that matter. It's entitled, Jehovah Will Help You During Difficult Times. It will be a study helping us to see that when we are experiencing difficult times, how Jehovah God can provide that support. I want to welcome all of you present either tomorrow at 9.30 or at 4 in the evening right here to have that discussion. It's going to be our discussion on how Jehovah will help you during difficult times. So don't give up hope. Gone too soon, we say. But that image that we had before with the paradise is one that was sure to come true. Jesus Christ promised it. His father said it, and he can't lie. So we can rest our hope that things will get better and that we can enjoy the life forever that God promised. Let's keep this thought in mind in the book of Psalm, Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10. It says, Jehovah will become a secure refuge for the oppressed, a secure refuge in a time of distress. Those knowing your name will trust in you. You will never abandon those seeking you, O Jehovah. May those words comfort us that our God, our creator, will never abandon you. He will continue to provide the assistance you need in these very difficult times of distress. So please, do not give up hope. On behalf of all present, I'd like to thank you, Brother Allen, for delivering that discourse for us. Before we sing our closing song in the prayer, just want to remind or inform you that those of you who were not able to have the viewing as yet, the casket will be open after the service here for a short while, and then you'll be able to have your viewing. We will, when we leave here, we are going to the Coleridge Memorial Gardens is where the interment will be. And I'd like to inform you as well that the family, after the internment, they want to have the evening in quiet reflection. So there will be no party, no reception after the internment. We want to sing our closing song. 
is on page four of your sheet. It's entitled, He Will Call. And after the song, we're going to invite by the Harold Gittins, who will close in prayer for us. Song, He Will Call. Eternal Father Jehovah, we come before your throne. Indeed, Jehovah, at this time, is a solemn occasion. We know you to be a God of wonderful qualities, most outstanding being love. But we remember the others as well, justice, wisdom, power. And there are many other qualities. But today, we want to focus on your love. And out of that love, you've given us hope and, more important, comfort. We need that comfort today, that comfort today as we come here to celebrate the life of, of Rodney. We ask you to comfort his immediate relatives, all his friends, those who would have spent time with him. But most of all, Jehovah, we recognize something that's very important. You have given us hope, hope by means of a resurrection. 
And earlier we come to understand how that resurrection would occur. You will call, and Rodney will answer. And his family will welcome him back. They will have joy. And all of us who know him, if we are there to welcome him back, we would have that joy as well. So may your spirit be with us all, be with the family as they reflect. We recognize that death is an enemy. It can be painful and bring a lot of sorrow. That's why we are asking you today to comfort the family. Comfort all those who are close to him. Comfort those who are in pain. Because we know in the future, when you call, Rodney will answer. And we know, like Job said, if a man die, he can live again. Rodney will live again. Because you have promised that you will resurrect the righteous and the unrighteous. So we are truly happy that you have sent your son to die for mankind to give us this hope in the future. We are not sad and full of sorrow because we recognize what the future will be, one of hope. So be with us all as you comfort us. We look forward to the final arrangements of this funeral. And we now want to ask this prayer in the name of your son Christ Jesus. Amen.
So hey. 
make a mist appears for just the day and disappears tomorrow. All that we are can quickly fade away, replaced with tears and sorrow. If a man should die, can he live again? Hear the promise God has made. He will call the dead will answer. They shall leave at his command. Friends of our God, though they may pass away, will never be forsaken. All those asleep who in the other memories stay, from death he will awaken.
Tournament. And just to continue what we started at the hall, we will use the scriptures again. And this is the text in the book of Ecclesiastes, in Job rather, Job 14. It was a question being asked by Job with reference to if a man dies, can he live again? It says, I will wait all the days of my compulsory service until my relief comes. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the work of your hands. So the text helps us appreciate that God longs for the work of his hand. We are his creation. And so he has an eager, he's eager to give us back the life that we have. And so there's hope for all of us and there's hope for our name. We want to keep that in mind that Jehovah God will take care of matters. One more text to look at before we have the actual interment is found in the book of Hosea. So let's look at this text together. Again, this highlights the matter of the resurrection. Hosea 13. From the power of the grave, I will redeem them. From death I will rest, recover them. Where are your stings, O death? Where is your destructiveness, O grave? So that will come a time when the grave will not have any more power and Jehovah God will raise the dead to life again. And that's a promise by a God who cannot lie. So what we will now do, we will have some songs as the body is in turn and the flowers are placed on the grave. But before the singing, we will just have a brief word, a word of prayer. So let's pray to our Father, please. Our great God, Jehovah, we come before you, recognizing you as the Most High, and realizing that we need you at this stage. So please provide the assistance needed. Please comfort the families and the friends here, and provide them with the reassurance that you will make all things new, and that you will make things better. We love you very much, Father. And we leave all matters in your care. So thank you for being our Father. We love you. And we express all of these things through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So let's sing the first song in your, in your song books. It's reference to Jesus Christ. You give your precious son. And as the body is lowered into the grave. Dear Father, there seems no hope for us. His ransom has given hope to everyone. He gave your lives to you, our best in all we do. And we take others to that your love might be done. You gave your 
precious Son, and now we sing as one, the song we'll sing forever, for giving us your precious Son. Your kindness, your mercy has drawn us close to you. Your great name, your friendship, these were come to love. But something more than this is your most precious gift. He died that we might live. You thank him from above. You gave your precious son. And now we sing as one. Your song we'll sing forever. For giving us your precious son. We also recognize too that the comfort that we need to endure the coming days and months and maybe years in some cases, that we will have the strength from our God. He will give us the strength. He will make us strong. And so the song we will now sing is a song entitled, He Will Make You Strong. So let's sing this song together. He will make you strong. God's brought the truth to you and comes you from the darkness to the light. And in your heart, he saw the burning thought you had. So serve for him and practice what is right. Promise you your spirit to do his will. He helped you then and he will help you still. If Jesus man he bought you to call you now belong, so he will make you firm and he will make you strong. He'll guide you and protect you as he has all along, so he will make you firm. And he will make you strong.
Concerning your behalf On this account He wants you to succeed He did not Withhold Bob is their son And never doubt His gift the strength you need Don't forget the faith and love you show Guide you and protect you as he has all along. Yes, he will make you firm. We read a text at the hall with reference to the paradise earth. In the book of Revelation, it mentioned that he will, the former things will not be called to mind. And he's making all things new. The song we will now sing is entitled, Life Without End at Last. And this is a reference to the eternal life that God promised all of us. So let's sing this song together, Life Without End at Last.
we sing of God's glory. Young as we play, we will live to and praise to God. I have it. Yes, you, you might have to sing it if, 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 you, if, you, if you're not finished. Just let me know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Live for the day when we'll say life is broken. That life without end that will come very soon. In fact, one of the songs that was played at the hall was the song Just Around the Corner. And it made reference to the fact that very soon all of the promises that God made in His Word will come true. And so the song that we will now sing is a song entitled See Yourself When All Is New. Let's sing this song now. We see, see yourself when all is new.
So we have done all we can for Rod. We're at the stage and we 
On behalf of the family, I want to extend a very warm thank you for all who attained and the comfort and the calls and all that you have done to support this family. So do have a very pleasant evening and do get home safe. Good evening. Bow to you, bow to you, yeah.